I represent the city of Iloilo and it is my pleasure to join you in this very important event. So just like many other cities in the Philippines, we are very much concerned with environmentally sustainable transportation in the light of growing traffic issues, congestions, and air pollution. The growing number of vehicles in the streets particularly cars and motorcycles, provided the impetus for increasing the sizes of our roadways, but we are not getting anywhere. So in planning for sustainable transport, we kept two things in mind. One is that streets are not just for moving cars and trucks, that streets must be shared to equally benefit pedestrian and cyclists. This is our story. Okay. So before I proceed, Allow me to give a brief background of our city. We are a city of uh, half a million people located in the uh, central Philippines. We have a robust economy and we have more than 62,000 registered vehicles and 132 kilometers of roads. We are currently facing rapid urbanization due to increasing importance of the city as the center of governance, commerce, and education. Transportation is demand greater than ever. The number of cars and motorcycles is increasing faster than commercial vehicles due to affordable car loans, lack of efficient transport system, and rising middle class. Walking in the downtown area has become dangerous since cars and motorcycles have taken over the sidewalks. Traffic is getting worse with the average commuting time and increasing from 30 minutes to 50 minutes. And our survey showed an elevated particulate emission and high level of nitrogen dioxide and volatile organic compounds all of which are due to the traffic and to the increase in vehicle population. We are a city provided with many walkable spaces. As a former Spanish colony, our town planners then adopted the law of Indies, which required the building of streets around a central area called Plaza Mayor. During the Spanish era, plaza serves as a place for social gathering. Streets converge in this area. It is a place where people are drawn to it. It is therefore very easy to imagine that plaza provides the connectivity, makes people pass it. During the American era, however, of which the Philippines became a commonwealth, the use of streets around the plaza changed with the introduction of automobile. Majority of the roads was used by motor vehicles with leftover space for pedestrians. Today, our urban space is exemplified by the design provided to us by the law of Indies. That is, the streets are still built in grid around a central area. Today also, the roads has been widened but remain unsafe for pedestrians. Our public plaza remained to be the center of our six districts. This map will show you how district plaza are distributed all over the city. 
Please bear with me as I walk you through the different plazas in the next succeeding slides. That's uh, Arevalo Plaza, Molo Plaza, another plaza. The preservation of historical value of our plaza help our people to realize that it's not just a place for gathering but an immovable asset. By our history, you have seen that since the Spanish era, public plaza has been providing us with a venue for walking. More than ever, it offers safety, encourage people who walk less to use it, help create a walkable community. To make plaza a greater place for walking, we have made it available for a variety of use, sports activities, recreation, community gathering, festival, etc. The preservation of plaza helped build ownership and gave them, gave our stakeholders a feeling of intimate relationship with the place. For this, we have passed ordinance number 54. This declared that all the six public plazas as heritage site. Congress followed afterwards Pass House Bill number 055-5495. The bill help us secure funds for the rehabilitation of our three plazas. The Iloilo River Esplanade is not at all a plaza in the beginning. It is one of our best example of community-led pedestrianization. The Esplanade is actually a flood control project and a traffic diversion road at the same time. It became a shared road when people gathered in this place every morning to walk and jog three months after its completion. Then more people came on evenings when traffic is slow. It became a full-time pedestrian area when the stakeholders themselves asked the mayor to close it to traffic in 2010. Redevelopment of the Esplanade from a pedestrian area to a linear park came about in 2011. This happened when the stakeholders again asked the national government to convert the area into a unique place so that more people can be drawn to it and want to use it. Today, the Iloilo River, River Esplanade is a popular venue with its landscape features, view deck, inverting area. In 2012, it was estimated that around 600 people converged in the Esplanade daily to walk jog or exercise. In 2014, Esplanade 2 was proposed. It was built across Esplanade 1 with same amenities. Now Esplanade 1 and 2 is connected by a heritage bridge. The Carpenters Bridge was due for demolition in 2010, but stakeholders led by Heritage conservationists objected to it. The demolition never started. The stakeholders went on to look for funds and was able to restore it. Today, it is a heritage park. It connects Esplanade 1 and 2 and was responsible for enhancing walkability in this area. Impacts the number of arrivals in Esplanade 1 and 2 is now estimated at 800 daily, 
and reaches to more than 1,200 on weekends. The restoration of Carpent Carpenter's Bridge became another example of a citizen-led project. Lessons learned help pave the way for the pedestrianization of Calerial, my next topic. Overall, the Ilo Ilo River Esplanade and the Carpenter's Bridge project help stimulate tourism development, help promote investment with the establishment of three business parks in the vicinity, supported walking and healthy lifestyle, fostered the conservation of Ilo Ilo River, and provided the stimulus for development of the river. So this is just a map showing Esplanade 1 and 2 and how it is connected by Carpenter's Bridge. Now let me walk you through very quickly on the next slides on the different activities that is happening in Esplanade 1 and 2. Okay, a walk and clean activity a canoe race, marching, um, a senior citizen led uh, exercise, even reflex reflexology, um, advocacy campaign, so now let's go to uh, Calierial. This is a road, a shared road project in the city's busiest street, the Calierial. Calierial is the historic center of the city. It is our commercial district, with most of the building built during the American colonial era. In 2014, it was declared a heritage zone by the National Historical Institute. Here you will find 15 heritage buildings restored through public-private partnerships. The Calierial Pedestrianization Project was a 90-day experiment designed to promote walkability, tourism without hampering business activities of the place. It is also a shared road project since vehicles were asked to refrain from entering Calierial on weekends. So this is a diagram of the walk in Calierial. So the, the, the program ran from December 14, 2013 to February 2014. Some groups promoted night tours of Calierial during the event. So let me walk you through again to the activities that uh, were in, career, in the pedestrianization project. So night strolling, cultural dance, lion dance, promoting healthy lifestyle, food festival, so road sharing is actually a movement in the Philippines led by lawyers in another island within the Visayas region. The movement aims to promote proper sustainability mobility that will equally benefit commuters, pedestrian, and cyclists as much as private car users. Representatives of the movement actually filed an unusual petition in the Philippine Supreme Court in 2014 that envisions 50-50 sharing of the roads. We in Iloilo City is part of that movement. What I am about to present to you are the initiatives we have undertaken to support that movement. Here in the city, cycling is preferred 
transportation of our construction workers and a weekend event for those who work in the office, for the professionals and businessmen. On special occasions, promotional rides are organized. Fun runs, on the other hand, are also organized events, usually with a sponsor. Whether it is a cycling or a fun run, the event, the event requires road sharing or limited road use by motor vehicles. The use of road by cyclist or runner during such event usually requires a city council approval. The city has organized a number of such events, and one of these is the National Duatlon, which attracted more than 200 cyclists. Another is the Dinagyang Hop Marathon, which was participated by 1,500 walkers and runners. We say runners and walkers because those who would prefer to run and walk are allowed to enter the race. Another is our Charter Day Run Celebration, which was participated by the largest crowd ever to assemble, numbering 30,000. Then we have the Walk a Mile with Senior Citizen was organized by the city's senior citizens themselves. It was participated by 1,000 senior citizens. Of course, the community have their own initiatives. One is the Iloilo Bike Festival which attracted 6,000 cyclists. This event is being held annually. Another is Walk or Run organized by the country's health service provider, the PhilHealth. It attracted more than 2,000 runners and walkers. The iFold is a group consisting of university professors who owns folding bikes. They have organized a number of events that promoted local arts, heroes days, and earth hours. The Apex Club and Rotary Club have their own too. Also, Nestle Philippines sponsors annual events that attracts more than 6,000 runners. It is called the Milo Marathon. So the next slides again, I will show you our road sharing activities. This is a pedestrian lane in a bike lane, newly constructed, a walking and running event in, on major streets, a cycling event. Uh, here we see we are promoting or we are building wide mass base support for running, walking and cycling. A, uh, again, building wide mass base support from our constituent. So, so, how are we keeping up with our vision of shared road? We have a slow start, but we are moving forward with something permanent. We envision that bike lanes will eventually paved the way for a serious road sharing movement. In 2014, we constructed the longest bike and pedestrian lane. It stretches out from the heart of the city to the next town, or a total of six kilometers. Also in 2014, by way of a city ordinance, we required all buildings in the city with parking areas to provide a space for bicycle parking zone. This actually took off when the national government intervened this year. This year, the mayor created the Iloilo Bicycle Council that will prepare bicycle master plan. Also, the comprehensive bike lane plan 
was completed this year with, ma with major universities now connected by active bike lanes. On pedestrianization, the city council have instituted four number no parking reforms to return the sidewalk to the pedestrian. So this is our plan for a citywide bike lane. Now before I end, may I show you a very, very brief video. No more? Okay, so that ends my slides. Thank you so much.